My name is Philip and I run a company called WeFlow and we help Salesforce customers to supercharge their CRM by enabling them to do proper pipeline inspection and forecasting. And one of the fundamental things we also do is to make sure that we help you to actually get all your activity data into Salesforce. And what I mean with that is getting all your emails and meetings into Salesforce automatically, because if it doesn't happen automatically, it probably will never happen. And one of the solutions that you can use that comes with a few flaws, but is a pretty basic and simple way to achieve that is the Einstein activity capture from Salesforce. I'll talk about the issues with that at the end of the video, and you can make your own decision whether you want to move forward with that or not. But let's get started with the integration. It's really easy. To get started with Einstein activity capture in Salesforce, you need to have two things ready. One is someone with admin access to Salesforce and two, you need to have someone who has admin access in the Microsoft 365 environment that you're operating in. So an admin who can add Entra applications or Azure applications to your Microsoft 365 environment. So if you have these two things, you can get started. And the best way to do that is to just click here on this little icon in the top right corner in Salesforce and then click on setup. And when you click on setup, it will forward you to the starting page of your uh, Salesforce admin area. And then here you can search for Einstein. There will be a lot of different Einstein features uh, popping up, but uh, the one that you want to select is called Einstein activity capture. And then just click here on settings might take a while to load. Salesforce isn't the fastest here, uh, but once it's loaded, just click on the get started button and this will prompt a little modal and will ask you to select a proper environment and also to give consent that you are authorized to make these changes on behalf of your organization. So in this case, I'm going to pick Microsoft Office 365. That's the correct choice if uh, your users are just using Outlook in the Microsoft 365 environment and then the right selection is the org level of 2.0. This is the most modern approach uh, that you can take. This one, the service account, that's actually an old approach that Outlook is not going to accept or Microsoft is not going to accept for a long time anymore. So just pick this one if you want to set it up centrally for your entire workspace. If you want individual users to authenticate with Outlook themselves, uh, then you need to pick this one, but we are going to go with this approach because it automates everything out of the box. All right, great. So everything is set up automatically for you. You don't need to worry about this part here at the top, but yeah, this is where now the global administrator for the Office 365 account comes in. So and that person needs to click on that link or you need to share that link with that person. So I'm going to do that now. It will prompt uh, another modal. I will pick my demo account here and uh, I'll give uh, consent on behalf of your application. So those are two different things. One is to use the Exchange Web Service with full access to all mailboxes and to sign in and read all the different user profiles. So you're gonna click on accept. Perfect, now the tenant ID has been added here. Now I click on test just to make sure everything is working and we can see great, the connection is working and I'm just gonna call this EAC, Einstein Activity Capture for Office 365. Great. Okay. Now, once we've done this, uh, Salesforce asked us to review the settings. There's three different things you can do. You can enable and disable emails, events, and contacts. So emails, I think is uh, pretty clear. You want to keep that on. Uh, for events, you also want to keep this on in most cases. However, there's one suggestion I would like to make, and that is to only use uh, a one directional approach. So um, basically, if you do both directions, what this means is that then an event is created in Salesforce. It is also pushed into the Microsoft Office uh, calendar um, and vice versa. However, in most cases, you want actually reps to use um, the calendar in Office to set up meetings. Uh, and not use Salesforce. This is pretty unstandard to set up meetings in Salesforce directly, and it can also cause issues. So if you manually log a meeting um, and uh, then suddenly Salesforce creates a calendar event for that meeting in the, in the Outlook calendar, this can actually cause a little bit of confusion, especially if you have uh, contacts added to that manual meeting log. So just make sure that you select only a one directional approach and the correct selection here is Microsoft Office 365 to Salesforce. Okay, for context, I actually suggest to keep this disabled. Uh, you don't want Salesforce to automatically create contacts for you. This is essentially what would happen then. It's very hard to manage and it creates a lot of duplicates. So only enable this if you really know what you're doing. 
Okay, next up, there's a selection around a sync back policy you can take. So you can select up to 180 days out of the box with uh, Salesforce. Um, other tools like WeFlow, we actually offer up to two or three years, depending on how long you've already been using Microsoft and Salesforce. Uh, but that's the limitation you get with Salesforce. So I'm just going to stick with the 180 days and you can do the same for events. So I'm also going to sync uh, 180 days back. I don't want to sync private events. Private events are usually private for a reason. However, uh, I do suggest to actually tick these two checkboxes. Uh, event series, this basically means a recurring event. So if you have a regular check-in between an account manager and a customer, right, um, maybe once a quarter or once a month, then you want that event series actually to be locked to Salesforce in order to understand what's going on there. And the same is true for removing deleted events. If an event is deleted, you don't want that to count as a meeting that happened. Um, otherwise, again, this creates confusion. So just make sure to check those two checkboxes. All right, going to hit next. And now you can see I have two different options to actually define which users should be using Einstein Activity Capture. So one is I pick user by user. And this will only work if you actually assigned a permission set to the users in advance. I'm going to show you how that works later. So uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, the approach I actually suggest is to use profiles because uh, what's happening with profiles is every time you create a new user in Salesforce, you assign them a profile like a standard user profile, or maybe you create a custom profile, uh, like let's for example, called account executive or something like this. Then um, every time you add a new user to that profile, they will automatically also have Einstein activity capture enabled. If you follow the user by user approach, then you will need to always go back manually select these users, save that, you know, and when somebody uh, leaves or you don't want them to use Einstein Activity Capture anymore, you need to again manually remove it. It's a bit tedious. So I just suggest to actually use uh, profiles and not users. And then, you know, you just pick basically here the, the standard uh, user, the account executive, maybe you want to add system admins as well for testing purposes. So um, yeah, that's what you can do. And then finally, the last step is before we go into the review is to actually um, exclude your internal domain. So in our case, that would be getweflow.com as an internal domain. You can also exclude customer domains if you like, uh, let's say, for example, gmail.com or yahoo.com, right? If you don't, even if you don't have them as customers, right, you can still exclude them, hit the next button. And then the final setting is uh, whether you want to share or not share. I suggest you share with everyone unless you have some restrictions or uh, due to like some policies and finance and banking, uh, this could be an issue, but for everyone else, um, sharing with everyone typically is the better approach, more transparency typically uh, leads to better outcome. So here it asks us to review it one more time. We did everything we could. So I'm just going to click on finish and yeah, that's it. We're done. As soon as Salesforce has saved all these settings, uh, Microsoft Office 365 is now activated on an org level. Um, so automatically all the users who are added to the profiles that I set up earlier will now have Einstein activity capturing enabled. Uh, you can always go back and change that. So you can always click on edit here and then, uh, you know, you can adjust uh, the users that you want to have added, the profiles you want to have added. So all of these things, they can still be tweaked. Um, that's not a problem. No. So none of the settings that we created are permanent, you can always go back and change it. Uh, now there's one more thing I want to make you aware of, and that is the activities dashboard. Unfortunately, if you use Einstein, you actually are not able to report on the activities out of the box. So you cannot use uh, reports in Salesforce to create dashboards. That is one of the many limitations that Einstein activity capture has. You can only report on it if you enable this activities dashboard. Now, this is a basically pre-built dashboard from uh, Salesforce themselves, and you will only be able to use that to report on it. If you want to have more reporting functionality, uh, check out some of the tools uh, that are available, like WeFlow, for example, getweflow.com gives you a free trial if you're interested in that. Great. Uh, okay. So next up, there is another thing that we need to do, and that is setting up the permissions if you want to follow the user by user approach. So let's continue with or that. If you want to follow the user by user approach, you need to assign permission sets to these users first. Uh, I already did that, but I want to walk you through it anyway now. So permission sets, uh, just type in permission here in the quick find menu in the top right. This will open up uh, the option to click here on permission sets. Just do that. Click on that. This will then load what you see here on the right side. 
And then what's really important is, is that you pick the right permission set. So there are two different ones. This one you'll find on the first page typically. It's called Einstein Activity Capture Sync C2C Integration User. This is the wrong one. Don't pick this one. Go to the next page and search for something called Standard Einstein Activity Capture. So uh, here it is. And then once you open this, you want to click on Manage Assignments. And then you see I already have three users assigned to this, so I can not assign it twice. But if I hadn't assigned it to them yet, I could select it here and then click on the next button to assign it. Um, I'm not going to do it because they already have that. But uh, yeah, this is basically what you can do in order to assign the Einstein Activity Capture permission set to these users. And what you're essentially permitting them to do is now to go and authenticate individually with their Microsoft account with Einstein or Salesforce in that case. Um, so if I now go back to Einstein uh, Activity Capture, I click here on Settings, I go to the Configurations, I click on Edit here. Um, what I can do then is those users who have the permission set assigned, I can add them here to the list. And what you see here is essentially that the use of users and profiles is actually not mutually exclusive. You can use both in combination. You can assign a few profiles to Einstein. And in addition, you can also assign individually uh, some users. So for that, I think it is useful. Um, but generally, again, I do recommend to follow the approach with the profiles only. This is the safer and lower maintenance approach. So this is the safe choice, better to follow that one. So Einstein itself is not a super bad solution. However, there are a few issues with it and you see actually a lot of people on the internet complaining about it. So don't take my word for it. Just search for Einstein Activity Capture and you'll quickly find a list of all the problems that people have with it. And this is also the reason why solutions like WeFlow are out there because they give you more control and they just give you a peace of mind that everything will just work. And I want to walk you through some of the major issues that you'll typically encounter with Einstein Activity Capture. Uh, not from me, but actually from people on the Reddit forum in Salesforce. So one of the examples here is if you change the email address for an account, the entire email history disappears. This is a huge problem and it's actually generally true for all of Einstein. So if you remove Einstein from your account, you will not have any email or meeting history anymore. It will just disappear from your Salesforce. So you don't own that data. Salesforce owns it. And that's a big problem. Additionally, you cannot have more than one email address for an account or a contact. For an account, actually, I think uh, that is fine. That's an email domain. But for a contact, you typically send emails to multiple contacts and you should be able to also sync one email to multiple contacts. That's totally possible with other solutions like WeFlow, but you can't do it with Einstein. Similarly, um, a big problem is that you cannot manually log an email anymore when you use Einstein. So if you used the Chrome extension before, you cannot do that anymore. That's quite unfortunate. It would be nice if it worked both together. Again, you can do that with WeFlow. Another example is that it just stops randomly working for a couple of days. Uh, you then lose out all the activities and you can also not sync back without quite a bit of like additional manual work. So uh, that's a big problem. And these outages, they just keep happening. Um, and then finally, the other issue that I want to highlight is that Often you have to create additional flows to properly allow Einstein to attribute emails correctly to contacts and opportunities. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. I, I think Einstein actually could do it out of the box, uh, but you need to create these additional flows, for example, to automatically associate contacts uh, as contact role with an opportunity, even though they are sort of like part of the same account and there's only one opportunity open it will still not be able to sync that email automatically to that open opportunity. So yeah, uh, these are some of the issues. There are more. Definitely, it's worth out checking other solutions. Again, I want to highlight WeFlow. We are very confident in our solution. You find a comparison of what WeFlow can do versus Einstein on our website, getweflow.com, and you can absolutely trial our product for up to two weeks for free, and we'll make sure that everything works for you. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Have a great day and good luck with the integration.